Yo guys, what is up? You're here with Impatient Gamer once again, and we're playing a brand new game for this channel. We're playing a game called The Guild of Dungeoneering. Yeah, it's about to hear this amazing theme song for this game. This game is like super unique and super fun to play. It's a great, uh, simple idea to it that they've done with the card game, with creativity added into it, and kind of an RNG explorer fighting system thing. It's really neat what they did, and you guys, I'm sure, are going to love this game just as much as I am loving it. I've watched videos in it, on it in the past, and I, I enjoyed them to no end. I've watched uh, Total Biscuits, he's the very first person I saw playing this game, and I fell in love with it. And I've just actually got it today, finally, because it was actually on sale for the Steam store. So I recommend you also pick it up if you are interested in this type of stuff. But let's hop straight into this game, this amazing game called The Guild of Dungeoneering. We've played a little bit just to get an idea of how the game works. But now I have like the basic idea of it. I've done, I've beaten like two or three dungeons I think total. So I'm basically, I know I know the tutorial steps. So I, all this stuff I don't care what they're saying. I already know what I'm doing. Let me just get straight to this. I'll explain it to you guys though. So this game is built off of this grid map where we can place our little cards onto it to either expand the map or add things to tiles that are already on the map. For instance, creatures and treasure. So right now though, we're in our guild because we are an expiring guild master and we want to make some wealth and fame for ourselves. So we're starting our own guild and we start by uh, recruiting some people. So we got this first dude, hair off the side of his head. And we're building a guild. This dude is an old man. He's the very first member to join. And he reminds me of Makarov off of fairy tale. So that is what we're naming him. Oh shoot, how the heck do I spell Makarov? Mac. Let's just call him Mac. <laughs> we're not even doing the K, which I know it's M A K something, but we're just doing Mac. His name is Mac. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. The little Mac. There we go. We got a little Mac. He's the first person in our guild. So, little Mac is gonna go ahead and work for us. In order to build fame for our guild, I don't really know what they're getting out of it, but they're doing it anyway. So I'm not going to question their their loyalty to me. Once again, all these games seem to have the thing of undial loyalty to the king, which is always moi. So this is how the dungeons work. You click on a dungeon, you start exploring, you get this hand of cards, and right now it's a tutorial, so it's doing it for me. But it'll he's like it says I'll play your first turn. It's easy. So you put down one of these blue cards, which is a room. And then you put down creatures inside of the room, and then you can also put down treasures. Your character will automatically try to walk to any nearest treasure or creatures. I'm not actually sure if he walks to creatures, but he, he tries to walk to treasure to, in the most direct line. You can't actually steer him around, so you have to kind of manipulate the map in order to get the guy to go where you want him to go. And once you actually do reach an enemy, you get into this little card fighting scene. It's a turn-based where the enemy actually goes first, so it's not like simultaneous. The enemy goes first, and then we get to go. So, this card that they're using right here, it's got two fists and a heart, and a negative heart, which means he's got two physical damage, and he's gonna lose one health. The cards can either have physical damage, magical damage, physical defense, magical defense, or some of these additional buffer type things, like this guy's gonna lose one health when he does this. And then we have our hearts down here. This guy has four hearts, this is rubber ducky, and little max has got five. So, we're gonna, Go ahead and click punch because it's our only option. And we're gonna do one more damage back towards him. First person is no health, wins. So this guy just played another damage to himself, but he's also gonna do one damage to me. But I'm gonna punch him also, which will do a total of two damage. He'll die, and I'll win this fight. It's as simple as it is, it's a really simple idea, but it's a lot of fun, and I really have been enjoying it just with the whole creative uh, build it yourself kind of dungeon explorer thing, which is really unique, at least for my understanding, it is. I'm really enjoying it. After you win a fight, you can select one of three cards, or you can get it to, you can get it to give you more cards, but that that's later in the game. We'll talk about that later. And when you win a fight, you get three options. You can only take one of these options. You either get to add it to your deck or add it to your person. So I can take the straight jacket to give myself one heart, which will give Little Mac one more health, or I can take the paper crown, get Holy Seal, which will give me one block plus gain one health if I block the damage. We're gonna go for the, actually, we're gonna go for the bottom option. Just take some coins, take some gold, because the first level is easy enough to do without getting these buffs. 
and we'll just get the gold in order to give ourselves some more money. So this is what I was explaining about how to kind of force your guy to go where he, you want. Right now we only have t these two platforms to walk back and forth between and our goal is to kill three monsters. We've killed one monster. They want us to go around and fight all these monsters, but like I was talking about how to manip manipulate your person, you can force them to go exactly where you want. So I'm not going to build into these other areas of the map. I'm just going to have him walk back and forth between these two. And that way he gets whatever I want him to pick up and nothing else. So we're going to head in and turn. He's going to walk here because this is the only spot and it's got money, which he wants to go get. And we're going to go fight this rat. So it's really unique how you can do these different types of things in order to kind of play the game how you want to play. It's, it's completely up to your will of how this game is going to go. You will eventually die. It's supposed to be just like a starting guild. They're no one special. They're not anything special at all, the members of this guild. So they're not very strong and they're not really ready for this type of stuff, but they do it anyway because I don't know why. They just do it anyway. And we're happy with that because that means we're making money for our, our guild that we want to start and building up fame for it. That was actually really close. I'm kind of tempted to take something to help me up, help me with this next fight. But we're going to go ahead and play it risky. We're going to play high risk in this game mode. We're just going to keep on taking the gold every time we can. We got a massive gem. We're going to put down a massive gem. And we're going to hope that we can... Can I put down two money? No, you can only put down one money a turn. We're going to hope that we can kill this rat. If he kills us, we're going to miss out on five gold, which would really, really, really suck because that's actually a pretty good boost for early in the game. Normally, you can get out of this uh, dungeon with like 50-something gold, but this gem might hit us into the 60s. It's a thing of RNG, obviously, because it's a card-based game. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it if it goes a certain way if it goes against what you want you can't really do anything about it you're just stuck with the the, camp, the cards that you're dealt but that's also kind of the charm to the game it makes it so you can't win you're you can't win every single time which is pretty cool in my opinion might be frustrating for some but i like that idea they, they force you to get out of your comfort zone which is pretty nice oh did we not get that he didn't ever pick up that gem so Dang, we're still in the 50s. I don't think he picked up that last gym because that was worth five things by itself. And yeah, it says looting gear and we only got three. And that, that gym by itself was worth five. I don't know if that if that works or not. Maybe the last gym you pick up or maybe the last treasure for the last room doesn't actually get picked up. So this is the other part of the game is expanding your guild after you've gained this fame. I think that's what it's called. I'm not even sure. We're calling it fame. It's a star. It, it represents fame in my opinion. So you can get this fame and you can spend it to upgrade your guild. By upgrading your guild I mean you can buy either people to join your guild or tools to improve your people who are fighting for your guild. I've done the first dungeon or two so I got a preference for the first dungeon of who, what I like to start with but after that I'm pretty blank. So what I like to go for for the first dungeon is to immediately stop using this original dude because he doesn't have any traits. This person has a trait, bonus treasure cards. So with my, this, the strategy I like going for, or I did go for the, for the one time I played, was to go high, high risk but high reward. So we're going to go with the guy who gives us even more rewards because it just makes sense to me for the playstyle I'm going for. So we're going to go ahead and get the guy who gives us extra gold. And we're going to build it on to the, the left side of the map. We're going to have the left side people and then later on you can get buildings that don't give you people which we're gonna put on the right side just because symmetry and I like to have it nice and organized at least in video games <laughs> and now we can go exploring ourselves we're done with the tutorial level it'll uh, expand this dungeon a little bit deeper so we can go to more levels and now we can fight with a cat burglar rather than fighting with little Mac oh my gosh I forgot to name him can I name him now but Let, let's just see if I can name this guy real quick Let's let's name you. Dang. We missed your name. I'm sorry, dude. Okay. So that's what we have. This is this is a uh, this is the game. That's as far as we're going to go for today. We just got done the one dungeon. Just did a tutorial just to kind of introduce it to my channel. Uh, if you guys like seeing this game, please leave a like and a comment. And if you want to catch more like more stuff like this in the future, please hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it so much and I I do this 
just to help entertain everyone else and I love to get the feedback of showing that it is entertaining people. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.